Hello guys, I wanted to talk to you today about uh, the ratings of major uh, major news networks since uh, since Trump has left office. Uh, really, just looking at uh, January so far. Uh, as uh, as you're probably aware, that uh, Trump has while 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 being president and running in 2016 and 2020, uh, Trump has dominated. Uh, the news in, in recent, uh, he's really dominated, uh, uh, the, the, the dialogue of, of, you know, it's kind of hard to have a conversation about politics without things going back to Trump. And some of it has to do a lot, uh, with his demeanor and his, uh, controversial decisions and, uh, the unconventionality of his presidency. But a lot of it also has to do with the way that, uh, he's been covered. Um, and mainstream media, uh, specifically audiences, specifically media with, 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 with news on with, with an audience that, uh, doesn't, that looks at Trump negatively. Um, if anything, it's the, it's the, uh, it's the programs that look at, uh, Trump in a negative light generally and their audience, uh, looks at him negatively that have been doing particularly well, um, I know at least CNN had had record-breaking uh, ratings in 2020, and there was plenty for them to talk about. 2020 was a wild year, and understandably, a year like 2020 that happened under uh, a Trump presidency was uh, was going to be extra. Uh, was going to be a glorious year for uh, for a news agent, a news organization like CNN or in MSNBC for that matter. Uh, but of course, election years are uh, bigger years for any... Um, election years are going to be a bigger deal for uh, for any news organization. There's just more to talk about. Um, <clears throat> so let's look into it a little bit. Um, so you've got... Uh, You've got ratings, so this is an average between uh, 8 p.m. and and like 11 p.m. It's like a three-hour window of prime time that we're looking at. So we've got the week of January 4th to January 8th. Um, on average, CNN had 4.8 4.86 million viewers um, over the span of those three hours. Um, so uh, in their three time slots. For prime time, they're they're basically the way they organized it was each of these uh, tr Fox, CNN, and MB MSNBC uh, each had a uh, three hour time slot. And I should mention this is a this is a uh, article by Variety, um, and so so CNN uh, went from four point eight six million viewers viewers on average per t prime time's time slot to. Uh, 1.94 million so that's a loss of uh it's a loss of nearly uh 3 million viewers per time slot uh in prime time fox has lost uh has went from 3.73 million to 2.9 million so that's uh what a difference in almost a million people rather than th rather than 3 million for cnn and then msnbc has uh has dropped nearly two million as well, from four point eight seven million in in the beginning of the year to uh, the first week of the year to uh, two point nine two million in the last week of the of of the month. So, uh, so S MSNBC and CNN started off the year basically as a tie, each about a million more viewers per time slot uh, than Fox, and CNN has fell. Uh, significantly further than even MSNBC, um, so, so, so yeah, CNN, CNN and MSNBC have both dropped by uh, almost a half. CNN has dropped by more than a half of their viewers. Um, so, going into this year, Anderson Cooper and Chris Cuomo uh, for CNN were were their top anchors. Um, and both of them had about 5 million viewers, and now they're down to uh, about 2 million viewers, both Anderson Cooper and Chris Cuomo. 
Um, so, um, and they were the number two and they were, so they, you could say they were like number two and three, but the number one, uh, the number, the number one host, uh, by viewership, uh, would have been Rachel Maddow at her, t uh, 9 PM time slot. And, um, so she started out with, at the beginning of the year, it was, she had three point or 5.38 million viewers and has lost, uh, one and a half million of them. So now she's at 3.77 million. Um, but she's still by far and away. I mean, she still has, uh, the largest viewership. Um, she had the, Rachel Maddow had the largest viewership of a primetime mainstream news network, uh, at the beginning of the year. And now at the end of the first month, she still has the most viewers. Although it sh I should mention that, uh, Tucker Carlson has sustained his numbers much better. Uh, he was, you could say he was number four at the beginning of the year. Now he's number one, or now he's number two. Still behind Rachel Maddow, but Tucker Carlson had dropped from 4.18 to uh, 3.5 million viewers during his hour. Uh, so you got 3.5 million viewers by Tucker Carlson by the end of the month of January. And you've got 3.77 million viewers on Rachel Maddow by the end of uh, uh, by the end of January. So uh, Rachel Maddow started a lot higher, and she's still higher than uh, Tucker Carlson. But if trends continue, that won't last. Um, but what you're seeing here is uh, what you're seeing here is is uh, Fox is holding up better uh, rating wise. Uh, CNN and MSNBC started off in a better position coming out of 2020, uh, but their viewership has since. Uh, uh, so now uh, CNN, CNN and MSNBC were tied for the highest amount of viewership in uh, 2020, or at least at, by the end of 2020. Now Fox is tied for. Um, highest level of viewership with C with MSNBC. CNN has slumped considerably further. Uh, but it should be uh, should be noted that all three of these um, organizations, all three of these news networks have lost considerable amount of viewership post-2020. And really, uh, since, since he left office, it's gone down considerably more. Uh, that's only been two weeks. But... Uh, you know, we should, we'll, we'll see, um, we'll see how much further this goes. Like I said, if trends continue, Tucker Carlson's, uh, viewership will hold up longer than Rachel Maddow's. Um, and that, uh, that doesn't really surprise me because, uh, well, for one thing, I just like Tucker Carlson's, uh, program better than Rachel Maddow. Um, even though I, uh, personally, uh, rely more on left-wing media, I still uh, find Rachel Maddow uh, very distasteful. I get most of my uh, I get most of my news from, from YouTube channels like Secular Talk or The Jimmy Dore Show. Uh, there are other good ones, but those are my favorites. So even they uh, typically paint Tucker Carlson in a better light than, uh, than Rachel Maddow. Uh, Tucker Carlson at least, uh, he, 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 he gets people in from both, like, he, he actually has crossover appeal, uh, from people on the left and the right, uh, he's, he, I'd say he's my favorite, uh, mainstream news anchor, um, besides this Adam Smear Kamish guy who, who does CNN on the weekends, um, and, uh, and yeah, so, so, uh, but that, but anyway, interestingly, uh, I think Tucker Carlson is going to hold up uh, better long term. Um, Rachel Maddow was boosted quite a bit over the last few years. Um, she, in in my book, I don't know what else. I, I like I don't know much about what she's known for besides uh, Trump and 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 uh, Russia Gate and the idea of him being a, a Putin puppet and and working for Russia. And there being no legitimacy to the 2016 election. Um, 
I don't know how things are going to hold up for her going forward, but given how all in she was on Russia conspiracy in 2016, and now that now, interestingly enough, Russia had no interest in 2020. Uh, all we heard about in 2016 was was uh, especially from Rachel Maddow was was how Russia has undermined our democracy and our election process. Interestingly enough, Russia didn't wasn't interested in 2020. Uh, they were they were about they were willing to almost start a cold war to or re, they were willing to reignite the cold war over 2016 but for some reason Russia isn't interested in 2020 uh, that argument doesn't really hold up that well and so like I said I, I think that Rachel Maddow's numbers are going to continue to decline uh, although probably not as much as CNN um, so where do where do these uh, news organizations go from here going forward? Um, well, there's still plenty to talk about. Um, they'll probably continue to discuss Trump. Um, there's the impe there's, uh, I think that the second impeachment hearing has been. Uh, has, I, th I think that's still going on. Uh, I don't know if it's reached the Senate yet. I think the Senate. I think it's going to die in the Senate pretty quick. The the second impeachment thing. Uh, but that's still being talked about. Um, Trump's ghost is definitely going to be, um, you know, the ghost of Trump is still going to be is going is still going to float around uh, his his legacy. You know, I mean, obviously he's not dead, but the fact that but you know the fact that he's not president anymore, his legacy is still going to be uh, still going to be found around, especially once he starts becoming more of a public figure again, um, because it's unlikely. Uh, as many people would suspect that Trump is just going to uh, go quietly into the good night, as they say. Um, so uh, there's going to be plenty more that, for them to talk about um, with Trump going forward, uh, but not as much. But but it's going to it's going to start to dwindle um, if he doesn't um, if he doesn't end up running in 2024, which would be which is still would, would still would be a surprise even after the insurrection thing, because he's said numerous times he's going to. Um, but he's been more vague lately. So we'll see what happens. But these news networks got to find something else to talk about because uh, because uh, Biden isn't going to give them the fuel that they need. Um, unless unless a major war breaks out in the next couple of months, these, these uh, networks are going to continue to tank viewers, um, even Fox. Uh, although... Uh, their viewership is is holding up better than CNN or MSNBC. So uh, we'll see where things go from here. All right, thank you.